Um, I wanted to say just a little bit about the Viroqua Food Co-op and Viroqua in general. Viroqua is a town in southwest Wisconsin, 4,300 people. Um, we, for the first 10 years, were in a building that was 920 square feet, um, doing, uh, at the end of that 10 years, $1.3 million, and had prepared for years to make a move and to grow. And like presenters before me that have uh, hinted at this, our long-range planning committee, which met for two years, was mostly made up of members who did not want to see us grow. So that work that they did you know, to see if we're ready, to see if we had internal readiness to make a move, um, was very telling, right? It really changed our whole group and it changed the whole culture of our, of our co-op about um, how we think about growth. So why does growth matter? Oh, well, I want to say, too, that um, we went from the, the little store with 800 members, uh, which was really exciting. We had gathered a couple of hundred right at the end there. And now we have over 2,800 members in our town of 4,000. So we're drawing, Viroqua is the biggest town in our county. We're drawing from uh, 30,000 and uh, in our county, and it has over 21 co-ops in our county. And uh, uh, the Vernon County Cooperative Association has been in existence, right? That's all the co-ops uh, co together doing work, educational work, um, has been in existence for more than 78 years. So we are pretty steeped in the co-op theme in our little rural community. But I was thinking about why growth matters. And um, I think really we, can, we cannot continue to serve our community without growing, right? They, they just don't go together. Uh, mission statements, we all are mission-driven organizations, and mission statements are built to serve, you know, this, this community that we've come together, and it's about a long-term commitment to do just that work. So if we make a commitment to growth and change, then we can, and be purposeful about it, then we can serve our community in all kinds of really great ways that we, that we can grow into. I think defining and measuring growth is really important for a smaller co-op. Um, you know, ca with capacity comes the ability to do different things in your, in your community. So as a tiny little co-op, there are those thresholds that allow you to do good work in your, in your neighborhood. Um, but you've got to kind of define it and measure it so that you know when you're there. And there's, there's obvious measures, growing your membership, growing sales, um, improving your wages and your systems in the co-op, uh, creating job opportunities. But there's not so tangible, the not so tangible, but really, really important pieces are, are just as important to the co-op structure and the co-ops that have missions in our communities. There's a sales threshold, a couple of them along the way, that allows you for really effective charitable giving in your communities. And I can remember when our Walmart, our super Walmart in our little community, bragged in the newspaper about giving $500 away to, the, to, you know, to charitable organizations throughout that year. And I realized we had given away $9,000 that year. And we were just a squirt. You know, we, I mean, Seward, when, when you were talking about Seward, who has always been a big sister co-op for us, right? We've always looked to them. Uh, when you were at six million, we said we want to be there. Well, now we're at six million, and we're doing we're doing some great work with that money, right? The, that nine thousand dollars was given away um, by uh, two organizations that had a criteria that we agreed on and that we voted on as a community. It was very purposeful money that we deliberately supported the organizations that were meaningful to us. Um, and it, it allows us, when you grow your co-op, it allows you to participate in that uh, big picture ideals that co-ops can connect to, that we've really seen in this year, the international co-op. For us in our community, that meant we could support um, Fifth Season Co-op, which some of you may know uh, is a new multi-stakeholder um, co-op that is uh, operating out of our new food hub. So it's a local food economy cooperative, uh, bringing together all the players there. And we were a big part of that. And we also uh, got to really support um, a private, one of the private schools in our 
community. It's the first organic hot lunch program in Wisconsin and the fifth in the United States when they started. Thank you. So uh, I think that another thing that's super important for growth, um, when you're thinking about growth in your co-ops, especially smaller co-ops, is to report on those, on those accomplishments, right? That's something that we, uh, as smaller co-ops, don't often have the capacity to do. And I think that's a mistake. I feel like that's a mistake that we made. We didn't tell everybody all the good work that we were doing behind the scenes as much as we could have. And so it was a surprise often to our community that we were growing or that we were doing all this great work. Uh, so we have to figure that one out a little bit better, right? The, um, the, because growth fuels the ability to do good in the world, and that's mostly what our missions are about, not just our single organizations, but this bigger idea about how we want our food economy to be, as, for an example. So I think that um, when you talk about that kind of stuff, we're talking about profitability, which is not a great word for many folks in the co-op sector. Um, but without that, we can't do some of the things that we say we want to do. And what brings that in check is to reach toward patronage re refunds. That's the cooperative structure that allows us to say, wow, we have profit, and it's coming back to the owners of this co-op. So it kind of puts that a reality check on uh, some of the things that we resist against having a successful business. So creating a culture of growth and change, right? Preparing and positioning yourself for growth. Um, always updating and staying sharp. The recession was kind of a, a great experiment for us um, w that we came out of kind of a well-oiled machine, right? It was, uh, made us tighten things up that we otherwise wouldn't have looked at. And now we find ourselves in a good cash position, ready to do the next project. Well, duh, right? We should be doing that all the time. But that was an opportunity for us to really get a feel for what that is like, so that we're doing that work all the time and tightening up our organization so that we can go out and create change. Um, a, a market study, wow, if I could, if I could uh, impress the smaller co-ops in the room to get a regular market study it's not just about our gut feeling and knowing what we want to do in our community, but really knowing the science behind what, where we can draw and how successful we can be there. Um, again, something that small stores don't often stretch for. So what does success look like uh, for us? I just wanted to touch on that a little bit um, because we actually asked ourselves this question right before we built the, the new building, which is now seven years old. We still call it the new building. Um, but, we, you know, that, that was a really uh, specific question for us. And we wanted to, we came up with a big list of things that I think we've accomplished a lot of. One of them was simply that the builder who worked with us who had never used environmentally friendly uh, products would then go to the next project and, and do that. And, um, you know, that's a win for us when that happens. Those are that, that big picture uh, in our community connecting everybody together. Or landscaping our, our um, dirty site, our DNR site, and uh, creating biofilter areas and, and recapturing that, that corner and putting it back into a beautiful space for our community. Uh, that was really scary for me as a GM because it costs a lot of money every year to maintain the kind of landscaping that we did. But we're very proud of that. And the Walgreens next door to us, who went to the city council with asphalt right up to Main Street um, as a plan, and the city council said, really? You're right next to the co-op and you're not going to landscape? And of course, then they did. And they used the right materials. And you know, so there's this thing that we can, we can claim as a success for ourselves. We're an inspiration to other businesses downtown. And that's what we wanted to be. We're a good business citizen. Uh, we're an active partner um, to raise the level of social and economic well-being in our community. We're good employers. We have great wages. Uh, even in our rural setting, um, our benefits and our wage packets are really important. We went from 15 employees to 50 uh, during this move. So it was a, it was a big deal. Um, having said that, 
that big deal. We spent all of our money on the building, right? We don't have a community room. We don't have a teaching kitchen. Uh, we don't have a space to ha hold a class. Uh, we put all of our eggs on the retail floor, if you will, um, because we knew we were going to grow faster than the amount of money that folks were going to give us to build. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, that's a surprise. <laughs> Um, so I just, <laughs> yeah, got to have some fun at work, right? So the last thing that I just want to say is that, um, you know, it's, it, it's been really important to us to collaborate with other like-minded organizations so that when we do have an educational opportunity, we're collaborating with the other area, nonprofits or, or cooperative-based folks and, and accomplishing the educational piece of our, of our co-op too. So that, I feel, has been a big success for us as well. So that's it. Thank you very much.